Sooner or later you're going to start to want to make your own footage if you're doing visuals on a regular basis. It's important to understand how digital media works, what alpha channels are, and uh, how to create seamless loops because they're going to be the main building blocks of your video show. This is the mask that I used in the uh, Triple Head to Go demonstration and uh, we'll just go through how it was made. The original image was a piece of op art and uh, all I did to create the transparency was uh, use the magic wand, select black, go up into the Photoshop menu, select similar. That gives us all the black. And then if we just delete that, we end up with uh, a white background and a completely transparent mask. And then just to make sure it's big enough to use in uh, After Effects, we go up to image, canvas size, and make sure that there's plenty of background on this. We want the mask to be about half the size of the final image, so we uh, make it a thousand pixels wide, which is the ideal size for working with still images in After Effects. That allows you to rotate images in a full frame of power without the corners intruding. So uh, if you're making still images for After Effects, make them at least a thousand pixels across. Just save this and uh, of course After Effects recognises the uh, transparency of the image without any batting an eyelid. And we'll be able to use that as a mask when we create our movie. We've got this clip of a girl and uh, we're going to make this into uh, a quick time movie that's got an alpha channel so that to uh, modulate and recognise the transparency that we're going to apply in After Effects. And, uh, that allows us to break out of the rectangular video format. The, uh, the actual video itself is going to be uh, square, but uh, the transparency will be circular. So uh, to all intents and purposes, it's going to look like a circular rotating movie. There's a component part that we prepared in Photoshop earlier, and we're just going to drop these straight into this composition. So as you can see, uh, After Effects has quite happily recognized the transparency that we apply to our Photoshop document. First thing we're going to do is apply a keyframe for the rotation. We'll go to the end of the composition, set the same frame at uh, 360 degrees and that will give us a full rotation. And then what we're going to do, press the page up arrow on the keyboard, which takes us one frame back in the composition and press the N key and that ends the composition one frame before the rotation. If we left it a full composition you get a double frame and you'd see a judder. So we make a perfect loop and then knock it back a, a frame so that uh, we get a seamless join. That's the trick to making these uh, seamless loops in After Effects. The circular mask is rotating quite nicely without any judders, although we do get that uh, little glitch every time the girl goes back to the start of the loop, but that's good enough for me. How do we get from here to making a transparent movie? Down in the timeline we're going to switches and modes and we tell the tap layer that's going to use the alpha inverted mat of the layer above it and what that does is this. All we need to do then is export it in a quick time format but it's going to hang on to the uh, transparency information and for that your best bet is animation at millions of colors plus alpha. So uh, here in the render settings we just need to go in, make sure the quality is best. Resolution's full, that's all good. Down here for the output module, usually I do my movies on H.264. We're gonna go into format options and we're going to tell it to uh, animation. There we go. Millions of colors plus alpha. Once we set it to render, it uh, won't take very long at all. It's only one and a half second loop and uh, We'll see it any second now. So we'll drop these uh, into modulate and uh, have a little play with them and just see how things work out. So I've made a rotating background just so we can see the transparency. In the moment we drop this, uh, this movie that we've just made in, full transparency, circular movie, um, everything doing exactly what it should. Here's the modulate logo. Uh, like all colour images, it's actually got three grayscale channels of information. And uh, if we switch a couple of them off, here's the blue channel. Not a lot of blue information. Here's the green. Uh, I think the red's got the most information there. It's nearly all black and white. And what we're going to do is just copy the red channel and make it into an alpha channel. 
So that's going to give us transparency uh, hidden in this Modulate document. And uh, Modulate will recognize this transparency when we take the logo in. Just to illustrate it uh, really clearly, what I'm going to do is select this part of the logo and apply a gradient. And uh, we can adjust this alpha channel using levels and uh, control exactly the amount of gray. And sure enough, when we drop this into modulate, you can see uh, we do have a degree of transparency. We've also got graduated transparency up at the top there where the, uh, the black fades through gray and into white. So uh, that's how your alpha channels work. Okay, so we're going to make a seamless loop of this clip. I've, uh, I've got a loop of this girl and uh, I've tried to find a section in the dance routine where the start of the loop is pretty much the same as the end of the loop. Get the razor, cut this somewhere in the middle and uh, then take the end section, move it to the front, take the front section move it to the end and then put a transition between the two and uh, this should give us an endless loop. Okay now we're going to speed this clip up so that uh, she's dancing at 120 BPM. Uh, I'll make all my clips at 120 BPM so that uh, I can just apply a global speed and get everybody to dance in time to the music. So uh, I'm going to divide 120 by the current BPM which is 102 it gives us this number, 1.176. And we're going to multiply uh, the speed of this clip by that number, and uh, that'll bring it up to 120 BPM. Finally, we're going to export this using QuickTime conversion. I'm going to down into the uh, QuickTime options here. And settings, we're going to set it to H264. I'm going to set that to high. Down here, uh, in the size settings, we're going to set it to uh, full PAL, which is what I prefer to work in, and we're going to deinterlace, and that gets rid of uh, any uh, interlacing artifacts when we uh, take this uh, video over into computer land and uh, play it back in progressive scan. So that's taking you through the basics of uh, preparing footage for modulate. I'm sure you can find out more for yourself, and uh, good luck. <laughs>